Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, passion for excellence, and by Dow Automotive Systems, innovations for clean powertrain solutions. This is Auto Line Daily for February 7, 2011, and now the news. And the big news today is coming from the NADA, the annual convention for the National Auto Dealers Association in San Francisco. This is where all the top dealers in the U.S. get together to discuss the big issues affecting their business. And all this talk of raising fuel economy standards to an average of 62 miles per gallon topped the agenda. Specifically, the chairman of the NADA, Ed Tonkin, says the government's proposal is not a good idea. According to Wards, he says the proposal could hurt sales and cost 1.5 million jobs. He says it's going to drive up costs and that will drive consumers away because they're not going to be able to afford anything. He predicts that mainstream cars could cost as much as $50,000 to meet the standard. But while dealers are fighting the proposal, looks like automakers are mixed about the idea. The Detroit News reports that Mark Royce, GM's president of North America, says the industry can meet any fuel economy proposal the government comes up with. He says a 62 mile per gallon average will not be easy, but that it is possible. But the president and COO of Toyota Motor Sales, Jim Lentz, says he does not expect the government will mandate a fleet average of 62 miles per gallon by 2025. According to Wards, he says more needs to be done to see if it's feasible and what the cost to the consumer will be. And speaking at NADA, the chief economist for Mannheim Consulting, Tom Webb, says that the used car market will remain strong this year. According to Wards, he says that used cars will outsell new ones by a three to one margin and predicts that used car sales will be 40 million units. He doesn't believe supply will be a problem either. Webb says it's not that hard for dealers to get used cars and that when dealers complain about the availability of used cars, they're really complaining about the high prices. Even though sales of Lincolns fell 21% last month, the Ford Motor Company wants to get rid of more Lincoln dealers. Currently, Lincoln has about 1,100 dealers nationwide. But Reuters reports that in big metropolitan areas, which account for 85% of the U.S. luxury market, Lincoln has 434 dealers, but wants to cut that down to 325. When Ford got rid of Mercury, it drastically reduced the floor traffic that came into Lincoln Mercury dealers. To ensure the remaining Lincoln dealers are profitable, the company needs to see them get more sales volume, and the fastest way to do that is to get rid of dealers so that the survivors get all the traffic. Chrysler revealed its latest advertising tagline, imported from Detroit during last night's Super Bowl. The automaker ran a two-minute commercial I entitled Born of Fire to promote its new 200 sedan. Luxury? The spot takes huh? viewers on a virtual tour of Detroit, but not in the way you'd expect. Instead of highlighting in Motown's virtues and sugarcoating its problems, well, Chrysler focused on yeah, everything that's wrong with this gritty, rust belt town. In fact, the commercial embraces the hardships that we've survived and shows that in spite of it all, we can still produce work, great you know, things. Driving home that point, it even features Detroit rapper Eminem. This ad is getting a lot of buzz, so follow the link in today's show That's notes if you want to see it. More story. bad news if you've been waiting for a Mahindra pickup. The compact truck has been rated by the EPA at a shockingly bad 19 miles per gallon city, 21 highway. Remember, the TR40 is a compact pickup and has a four-cylinder diesel engine. A V6-powered Ford F-150 gets up to 23 MPGs, and it is a full-size truck. Mahindra originally said it would get 30 miles to the gallon. My guess is U.S. safety and emissions regulations added weight and robbed efficiency, but even so, this is a shockingly poor performance. Hey, what's going on at Hyundai Design? Two years ago, the top designer for Hyundai Motor America, Joel Paskowski, the guy who oversaw the design of most of Hyundai's amazingly successful products on sale today, abruptly left the company. He was replaced by Phil Zack, 
who Hyundai headhunted away from General Motors. But now Phil Zak has abruptly left the company and returned to General Motors. Something tells me that something's not right at Hyundai Design. And in cases like this, it usually involves restrictions on creative freedom. Translation, the bosses at headquarters in Korea are dictating the design they want. The styling of the Sonata has been criticized in Korea for being too expressive, too swoopy. My guess is they don't want expressive design. And speaking of expressive styling from Hyundai, let's take a look at the newest car in its lineup that looks like it could be another big hit for the company, the very swoopy Hyundai Elantra. Reducing exhaust emissions, aerified diesel particulate filters, high filtration, low back pressure, small package size, excellent durability, DowAerify.com. The new Hyundai Elantra looks like it's going to add to the sales momentum that's rolling along at Hyundai. It looks like a younger brother to the Sonata, but offers the kind of content you'd expect in a more expensive car. We recently caught up with Brandon Ramirez, the head of product planning for the Elantra, and asked him to point out the highlights. Hi, my name is Brandon Ramirez. I'm the product planning manager for the all new 2011 Elantra. Now Elantra delivers fuel economy, design, and roominess. So let's talk about fuel economy. Elantra has a 1.8 liter four cylinder engine that's mated to a six speed manual or six speed ma uh, automatic transmission to deliver 40 miles per gallon standard, whether it's a manual or automatic. Also it delivers 148 horsepower, which is a 7% improvement over the previous generation. In the Elantra, we also uh, provided the fluidic design sculpture. And what you'll see is these sculptured hood creases and wraparound headlamps. And what that does is it provides a impression of constant motion, even while the, the, the vehicle is standing still. Also along the profile, you'll see it has sleek character lines. Again, to provide an uh, impression of constant motion. When we get to the rear of the vehicle, it has these wraparound tail lights to complement the wraparound headlamps. Also, Elantra features these 17 inch alloy wheels on our limited trim to improve the appearance and improve handling. From the interior, the EPA categorizes as a mid-sized car rather than a compact car like Civic and Corolla. And when you combine passenger and cargo volume, it's even larger than some premium models like the VW CC, Acura TSX, or even the Nissan Maxima. There are some premium features as well. For example, it has a seven inch navigation with rear view camera. Also, it has a compact segment first heated rear seats, heated front seats. It also has leather seating surfaces and a proximity key with push button start. So as you can see, Elantra delivers design, fuel economy, and interior roominess. Wow, heated rear seats? Who'd have expected that in a compact car? No wonder they're using the tagline, snap out of it. You get a lot for your money. A base Elantra with an automatic transmission, which is how the overwhelming majority of American consumers are going to equip it, starts at $17,000. Don't forget to tune into Open Line for the only automotive discussion where you can participate. Join Michelle Naranjo, the host, starting tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern Time for Open Line. And that's today's report on the top news in the global automotive industry. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.